All right, we're here at the Maui Invitational uh, with the post-game uh, summary brought to you by Bowman Medical Group. We got Coach Cecil and our man Darnell Kirkland Jr. here. Hey, gentlemen, talk to me a little bit about this first game uh, we had with Tennessee and Syracuse, uh, you know, with uh, 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 Tennessee coming out on top. What, what were your observations? Coach, tell me what you saw there in that, in that first game. Well, I saw jitters at the beginning of the game. It was little or no really offensive continuity on, on both sides. Both teams looked like they were a little nervous. Maybe trying to get some of the island out of them. I mean, you look at the score the first half, 31-24 or whatever, something like that. Not typical what you expect. Second half, they kind of get, got a little bit looser. But you can tell Tennessee had a little more poise, a little more experience maybe, especially in the guard position. Uh, and uh, kind of start to take over the game just a little bit uh, to get their help work their top player out went out. But Tennessee was starting to get into his groove too. Uh, and uh, he went out, which kind of kept the game close. But by and large, Tennessee's experience kind of showed up a little bit more. Uh, and the youth, maybe of Syracuse, the youth system and everything kind of showed up with them. Darnell, you know, you, you were making some observations, uh, you know, about just how they were protecting the paint, uh, particularly on the Syracuse end. Uh, but then Tennessee was playing aggressive. You know, what, what, Tennessee played that Tennessee-style ball. What were some of your observations? Yeah, it was a real, it was a real physical battle. Uh, I think it, it, for most of it, it was closer than the scoreboard indicated at the end. But uh, the biggest key to the game for me is the battle on the glass. Tennessee dominated with the second chance points. They got a lot more second chance uh, opportunities than Syracuse did. And, uh, at the foul line, um, I'm sorry, uh, we'll get the guys in here. But um, yeah, at the foul line, you saw Syracuse, they, they were getting a like, few opportunities, and they were making like 40% of their free throws. So right. that really hurt them at the, coming down the stretch. So, like, like Coach said, the experience of Tennessee, they prevailed through. Um, they, they lost uh, their best player, Dalton Connect, at the end. But um, he, was, he was playing a really good game up to that point. So uh, we'll be, I'll be excited to see what uh, Tennessee all right, well, we uh, thank you guys for the observation. We got game two, it only gets better here. We got Purdue and, 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 and the Zags getting ready, and uh, we got another fire burner here. Uh, that's it here for our post game show. You know, I've said people through the years that you know, that, uh, Jim Beheim had a lot of credit for his defense. I don't think he ever got the credit he deserved for his offense, and uh, I would say the same thing that as I, we prepare for them. I think that when you were a player, as great a player as, as, uh, as Adrian, uh, yeah. those guys, I mean, he puts them in positions where they can really, he's real hard to go. And he wants them to be aggressive. He wants them to attack. He uh, uh, just keeps it, I think, somewhat simple, which I think is great coaching. And uh, But he, he does what coaches should do. He gives his chance to, uh, players a chance to win because he puts them where they can do what they do best.